Now we have to be careful of a specific type of variable that is referred to as the extraneous variable. Now extraneous variable can be defined as the variables that might have an impact on the other variables that we are interested in but we may have failed to take these into account when we were designing our studies. Now this can be very dangerous because this can mess up the whole study in terms of the interpretations that we make at the end. We do not go in much detail about extraneous variables which can be a topic for a separate video but we talk a little bit about a specific type of extraneous variable referred to as confounding variables. Now confounding variables basically force us to answer this question which is present on the screen now. How do we know that the change in the dependent variable that we observe is caused due to or as a function of the independent variable? Confounding variables can be defined as a specific type of extraneous variable that is related to both of the main variables that we are interested in. Thus, having confounding variables interfere in our study makes it very, very difficult to clearly isolate if the changes in our dependent variable was due to the independent variable or some other factor that casts the same effect on the dependent variables as the independent variable of interest would have. Suppose you are designing a study wherein you want to discern the changes in the number of items recalled and the recall accuracy of those items when participants are subjected to a memory-specific training versus a non-memory training group. So for this study, for example, you have recruited a population of participants. You then randomly allocate these participants to two different groups, which is memory training versus a non-memory training group, which in this case could be spatial skills training. Note that at this stage, you haven't actively subjected any participants in either of these groups to any type of training. You have just divided them. The participants are then given a task wherein they have to study and learn two different lists. In list one, the participants have to learn 12 pairs of names and faces, and in list two, the participants are uh, instructed to learn different cities and famous cuisine or dishes found in those cities and 12 pairs of them as well. Following this, the participants from both the groups are subjected to a pre-training measure or a pre-training test, wherein we subject them to a recall test, a memory recall. So let's look at some mock data that has been generated for the recall tests across the two groups. Remember that the participants in each of these groups have not been subject to any active training yet and therefore we are getting a pre-training measure of the performance in the recall test. Also remember that we are interested in two key measures of interest which is the number of items recalled and the recall accuracy performance. So here we have the mock data for the two groups and we observed that the performance of each of the groups does not differ that much in either of the recall accuracy or the items recalled. Now we subject the participants in each of the groups to active training sessions. In the memory training, the participants learn about different strategies to better encode, store and retrieve and recall information. So in other words, they get better in their memory uh, capacities. And in the uh, spatial skills group, they learn uh, how to better their spatial skills that has got nothing to do with their memory at all. Following this active training, the participants retake the recall test and then we account for their post-training measures. Let's look at some mock data of the post-training measures. Here we have some mock data for the post-training. And we observed that the memory training group has done fairly well in both the number of items recalled as well as the recall accuracy as compared to the spatial skills training group.
Let's look at the possible confounding variables that could have affected the recall accuracy and the number of items recalled in our memory training study example. A common confound could be age. If the two training groups are not age matched, then any difference in recall performance could not be attributed to the type of training session because significant age differences can introduce differences in cognitive competencies, which then lead to the differences in the performance, which is absolutely independent of the training session or the independent variable of interest. The second confound is if the experiment was undertaken in the same environment or not. Now, if the two groups are tested in different environments, then the conclusions pertaining to the effectiveness of training sessions impacting recall performance might be inaccurate because different lab environments can either enhance or hinder one's cognitive abilities as well. The third possible confound pertains to one's educational background. If participants are not fairly matched for their backgrounds and their education, this could also interfere in their recall performance, which could be again independent of the training session type that they are subjected to. Finally, if the participants have a diagnosis of a specific psychological or neurological condition, this could also impact their recall performance. And thus, the difference in recall performance could be stemming from the difference of having a specific condition, but not as a function of the difference in training session types. Thank you.